We had fucking razor knives. We had razor knives in prison. So this is the story of the leather program in Nellis Air Force prison camp in probably about 2002-ish. So I was planning on leaving. I had set it up with a couple people. 9-11 happened. Got stuck there. Nobody showed up to pick me up. So I wasn't really investing much into prison. I was taking all the little classes that I could take. I was working out, I was doing all that kind of stuff. But I wasn't, like you can, you can do hobbies. So when I got to the prison, I was over there at Nels Air Force Base Camp with three wardens. And things really changed drastically under those three wardens. So when I first got there, it was just kind of a, like, like you would expect, like I expected it to be, right? So there was just little classes, people were working, you know, there was no obvious shenanigans going on. There was shenanigans going on, but it wasn't like just super out in the front of everything, right? So, under that first warden, I was under this whole, like, just super behave because I'm gonna escape and go to Canada. That was my plan. I'm not gonna do this fucking time. Fuck these fuckers and their drug war, right? So, I made arrangements with this chick that, that I used to work with on the streets and a dude that I was in prison with and I was trying to get this other dude on the streets that I was friends with to come get me, right? So, I'd sent letters out with dates. 9-11 happened. I got stuck in the camp. Nobody showed up to pick me up when I went to escape. So I came back. And then I got a fucking letter in the mail that my appeal had been accepted. So I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna get some time off. I'm not gonna have to do the whole seven years, right? Well, so at that point it was like, well, I'm gonna start doing stuff around here. And there was this dude that had showed up from a higher institution that was a very charismatic, fucking intelligent, cool dude. And this dude, Crow, was in a leather program in a different prison, I think like Terminal Island. And now he was in a camp. There was no, there was no hobby type of program. There was a little bit, but not really. There was classes and all that. But when he showed up, so when 9-11 happened, that was kind of like about when the warden switched and And so we got this new warden and we couldn't go on the base for months because of the whole heightened security. And then like the warden got into a beef with the Air Force so then he wasn't really sending many guys down there. And that was the whole point of that camp was it was the slave labor. And when I say slave labor, I mean literally. The Constitution says there's no slavery unless you're convicted of a crime. That's why they keep making more and more things crimes so they can have more and more slaves, okay? It's all by design, right? So, we're the slave labor for the Air Force Base. And I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before, about all the different things we do, did there. So now I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do stuff. I'm gonna hunker down. And so, this crow kept going, man, you gotta get in the leather program, you know, because he had a vested interest and more people signing up because the more people signed up the more it, the harder it would be for the institution to get rid of the program it's a super popular program then you know a bunch of people are doing it they like that in the story 
okay? So, he kept hitting me up, hey, 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 and I'm, you know, and I'm like, you know, I think it's a great thing, and I think it's cool and all that, but I'm really, like, like, there's nothing really, like, I'm into going on in there. And what's going on in there is some very epic stuff, right? Like, Crow showed up, and he wants to make saddles, okay? And then he starts the program, and there's this other cowboy dude there that wants to do, like, um, other leather stuff, you know? And people would make little, like, radio covers and, you know, just all kinds of little trinket stuff. Well, then it just started getting into super artistic, like, heavily, like, this cowboy dude said this Juan Gonzalez dude was the best leather tooler he had ever seen in his life and he came from like this whole like cowboy background right where he'd seen a lot of this stuff for years so Juan had mixed the traditional tooling methods with all these cup picking methods that that people do in jail they'll they'll get a cup you could buy a cup for yourself on the commissary and then they would like take maybe a paper clip or a staple or whatever you can get your hands on and they would poke holes in the cup like tattooing almost and in different shades and and they put murals on these cups that were just fucking amazing right so one took that skill set and applied it to leather for the first time presumably ever making this whole and now the artwork that he was doing this with was like a mixture of Mayan and Aztec traditional like Mayan calendar style art but with like Aztec stuff as well like his own LA like a total LA Hispanic dude style stuff right and it was just amazing he was making um, photo album covers right so you're in prison you could take pictures with like your homies your friends and family that come to visit and then you get that actual uh, photo right and so people have been in prison for years and years and years and collected you know hundreds of photos and they would put them in these photo albums so he would custom make the covers to these photo albums and um, you know, there was a whole line. People were making like Louis Vuitton purses for their girlfriends and coach bags and just all kinds of stuff. It was an amazing, amazing leather program. It started in one room and then it grew over to a whole nother room. And people were in there like in every single free minute they had, they were in there. Because they could actually make, and people were getting in trouble for, you know, running businesses and, you know, aren't supposed to, but, you know, people were poor and they couldn't do shit and they could sit in there and make these things and send them to their wives and, and, and end up having, you know, something, presents and all this stuff, you know. So, I mean, overall, it was a fucking, it was awesome. These guys, you know, whether they could take that skill set and go out to the streets and start doing leather, you know, that I, I kind of doubt. But, you know, these guys giving them something to do is freaking awesome, right? So that was what was going on in there, right? Well, I'm like, you know, Crow, come on, do leather, do leather. And I'm just like, well, oh, fuck, man. I'm just not cowboy nothing, you know? So finally... I start thinking about like fucking bondage gears all leather. So I asked Crow, I'm like, can you get the little clippy things? Get little rings and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, yeah, fucking get studs and spikes and I mean, you name it. If it was in a leather catalog, we could get it. I mean, we had fucking razor knives. We had razor knives in prison to cut leather with. And there was no problems. Nobody ever fucking cut anybody I guess there was a story about how somebody tried to kill themselves like before I got there and they used whatever they used I don't know but anyway um 
we never had any problems, right? And now this was all under the center warden, the, the second warden. Under him, the camp got full-blown crazy. I mean, he cut all the programs except the leather. I mean, all the classes and anything that, you know, one prisoner would teach another prisoner. Like, he got rid of all that. He stopped sending a bunch of people to the camp. He got rid of a bunch of cops. Like, he cut the staff of the prison down to just bare bones. Which was just, you know, a recipe for party time, right? So, I was in there making bondage gear. I, I started off by making, you know, like all the cuffs and strap kind of things like. And then I started making like paddles and uh, floggers and bull, bull whip, right? So I'm fully making like just all this stuff, right? And I'm sending it out and people are hiring me. I start off by braiding the handles. So I can braid leather around the handle of a whip handle, you know, and that's how it starts. And then I braid this bull whip. That took me like a hundred hours. And I'd be in there just stoned off my ass and just twirling away, just brain, 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 brain. Cops would come in and stand there and watch and, you know, be just amazed at the leather level of work that was going on in there. So I, I was in there for like a year or something, you know, and I pretty much like got to the point where I'd done everything that I wanted to do, right? And I had just totally, like I had to tons, multiple sets of bondage gear, all kinds of different stuff, floggers, and just, I mean, just tons of different stuff. And I was just like kind of, kind of over it after a while. And we got a new warden and um, that warden was there to crack down because things were just so crazy that they literally had like an emergency situation with that camp, right? She moved the leather program. And, I mean, she basically just put so many rules on the leather program that you couldn't even, you couldn't even really do anything anymore. I mean, the tools were all locked up. You had to have a, a guard like sitting there watching you use the tools. I mean, it was just ridiculous, you know? Like, that wasn't the problem with the prison. But this this lady was just a fucking man-hating fucking, like, very, very few BOP employees aren't just 100% pieces of human trash, okay? The fucking quote from Winston Churchill stands, right? You want to see the scum of the earth? Go to the changing of the guard at the prisons. Because there is nothing lower than another man's keeper. Right? Yeah. The prison system is a complete fucking failure. 100%. It's a fucking industry for money to give retards a fucking job and to fucking lock up free thinkers. Okay? So that's the reality. So the leather program went from being nothing to this dude, Crow. And then he actually, he had, that was his job. He got a job in recreation taking care of the leather department. Right? So that was his whole existence at this camp. And this guy would hardly ever go outside. Prison fucks with people's heads. The higher a prison level you go into, the more mental damage you have from the experience. The longer you're there, the more damage you have, right? This guy, he had gone to fucking college, super brilliant guy, and then he got put in this high security prison for a really long time. It affected him, he was like, Super smart, nice guy, but he had fucking issues, right? And so when that other warden came in, she fucking broke up everything, right? I mean, there was all the rooms that the leather room, the leather was in uh, these things downstairs. And I'm pretty sure they locked up every room downstairs, except like the laundry. 
we used to have like pool tables down there and all this stuff. And, and so this one dude, this Jaime, this Mexican dude, he was going on a furlough. He had a hot chick that he had been writing naughty letters to for a long time. And he had made all this bondage gear and I had made him, he had hired me to make him a flogger. And I had made him a flogger. Well, he was saving all this shit in his fucking locker to take with him on his furlough. And he was in the drug program and he was about to get out, get time off his sentence and all this shit. Well, he got fucking a 100 series shot, which is like, like, like killing someone in prison is a 100 series shot. Like, like fucking raping someone in prison is a 100 series shot, right? So it's the highest level you can get. Sure, there's, you know, degrees and his was for having a weapon. This fucking flogger that I had made him, that he had hired me to make him, that he had had in his locker. Now, I had made so many of these things. That it was ridiculous, right? The, the program was all good with all that shit. No problem whatsoever. Well, they decided when this new ball busting warden came in that that was going to be not the way it was going to be run anymore. So, they literally freaking busted this guy with a huge shot and sent him up to a higher security level prison and took his uh, drug program away. So this guy had to do like extra time. I think he got like, he got good time taken away from him. He lost his drug program and he had to go to a higher fucking security prison. All for this sex flogger. Flogger, yeah, a flogger. Like, can you imagine the prison fight where the dude busts out a flogger. Like, come on. Come on, motherfucker. You know, I mean, a cat of nine tails. I mean, it had a lot more than that, but I mean, give me a fucking break. You know, this is just the level of retardation you see in the fucking Bureau of Prisons. Like, the people running the show are a bunch of fucking retards, okay? So, they took this program that a lot of people were making a lot of amazing stuff and doing a lot of cool stuff. I was just kind of an outlier. I wouldn't say I ruined it. The program was already moved into a whole different building and put all into locked up situations and long before they busted Jaime. And so, you know, it was kind of a bummer. They sent Crow to the base, and yeah, just, you know, yeah, the memories of down there. Like, I, I have one memory. There was a big fight that happened down there. And so that's probably the next story I'll tell, but yeah, the leather, the leather program there for, it was really amazing. Just art, craftsmanship uh, on a whole scale that really is rare to be able to be around a bunch of people that are all super crafty and being real crafty. I mean, there maybe there's maker places around that I have never been to and I don't know about, but it was really fucking cool. Really fucking special. Really, really, really. Like, I cannot emphasize enough how special that whole experience was and how much I learned. Did I ever start doing leather again? Nope. Will I ever do a leather again? Probably not. But, you know, uh, I wouldn't trade that memory. Uh, so, all right, there's another story. We're in the prison years. If you like this video, subscribe, comment, ask me a question in the comments section below. I will answer your questions. Have a wonderful, have a great day.